Welcome back, Zero K fans, to Nanolays at Dawn. I remain your host, Shadow Fury 333 and this last match for today is going to be between Hokumoko and Dime Friend on Fairyland. Let's see if Hokumoko wins this one! Because they were complaining about me always casting games that they lose, so maybe, just maybe, this match they win. I don't know. We'll find out. Anyway, Hokumoko going for a Shield Bot Factory! Which seems apropos given the comments for the last game in the peanut gallery about how Shieldbot would have been really useful in Dimefront, however, going for Gunship. Which, yeah, Fairyland. Welcome to Fairyland. Welcome to Isle of Grief. Welcome to a lot of maps. Pretty much any map that has a decent amount of distance, like corner starts and any kind of ramps. Or not even necessarily corner starts, just somewhere defensible at the start. Yep, Gunship land. Doesn't manage to do a huge amount of damage, though. Slows down the metal extractor construction. No, doesn't do anything. Wow. Got through the shields too, but nope. Didn't actually really accomplish anything. It slows down. Okay, this comic's a little bit slowed down. It can't just go from metal extractor to metal extractor. It has to heal this one up so it doesn't die. Which it dies. Okay, never mind. It did a job. A blast wing did a thing. How about that? Blast wings aren't totally worthless. Banshees, however, are all coming up. One Banshee right at the start, too, and not a whole lot that Hokumoko has to deal with. This. Hokumoko does have Reclaim from that Metal Extractor, but... Yeah. Not a whole lot Hokumoko has to deal with this. Dimethroin building up a few more Metal Extractors themselves to get on par. Hokumoko, however, really good for power. Their energy infrastructure, it's good. And Banshee getting distracted by a dirt bag. I don't know why it's trying to... I mean, I guess it has to kill it at some point. There's nothing else that will. But that is a distraction that does leave things open, and Dimethrin basically lost something of a window of opportunity. I mean, they could still attack. There's actually, it's really open right now. Hokumoko is super open. Dimethrin could just rush in with that Banshee right now, hit the back of the main base, rip apart all these wind generators. Now, there's no way that Dimethrin knows this. So that's why they're just hanging out over the foggy water. But if they did, and if they tried it, it would be super successful. Except for the outlaw, that would be a problem. That would actually present something of an issue. One Vandal, however, not really a problem. And actually, it looks like... Nope, Dime Friend scared away. Okay, not sure what they're going to do. Going for Wasps, going for more Banshees? No, going for Blast Wings. Good choice. That gives them some free scouting. I mean, cheap scouting. Actually, 55 metal, that's not that cheap. Well, for scouting purposes, it's fairly cheap. So yeah, go for that for scouting. That's good. And then, once that's done, well, more construction. That's really the best thing to do. Build stuff up. Do the construction-y thing. Why this? I mean... Oh, wait, I know why. Of course, Blast Wings. Because Blast Wings burrow when they stop. I keep forgetting that. It's like, so rarely do you see Blast Wings used as mines. But yeah. The Outlaws make a lot of sense for that. They aren't dealing with the Banshees, though. They might help a bit, but they aren't actually directly dealing with them. They cause problems, though. I mean, it's really hard for a Banshee to directly attack an outlaw. It's just that the point is Blast Wings. You want to make sure those Blast Wings that might be buried, like here, for instance, and here, won't actually do anything. And Dime Friend going for a Clicky Bot Factory switch rather slowly, actually. No! Jump Bot switch! Instead, okay, the Clicky Bot Factory was a bit of a dud, I guess. Surprised that frame is still there, but yeah. So, Jump Bot and Black Dawn? Whoa! Dime Friend going all or nothing. I mean, this'll deal some damage, but holy crap, all or nothing. Like, these Banshees are managing to get some information. They're trying to figure out what's going on, seeing some defenses, to some extent keeping things held at bay, but yeah. Blast Wing. See how that works in about a minute. I mean, at this point, Hokumoko is probably not too worried about air. At this point, they've held up everything that's coming in, and only two Banshees, that kind of implies... Well, implies one of two things. Either the air is just a bluff, like, all they're doing gunches for is just to kind of scare you into making the anti-air, but it's not really a thing. Although, good Convict kill. So, Hokumoko losing one more Convict, that's not a big blow. They have a lot of them. But yeah, so, normally when that happens, it's because a fact switch is happening. Normally it's like, oh, well, they're not really going for air. They're building something on the ground. That's all it is. And that's true. But not completely true. And instead we have a black dot. It's like, this is going to be a gamble. This is super risky. Because, I mean, yes, okay, it could come in, blow up all these wind generators, deal a lot of damage, 
knock out a lot of Hokomoko's economy, get rid of the outlaws for one thing. But, man, after that first shot, I don't know. It just seems like after the first shot, there's just going to be more vandals, because okay, obviously there's air. There's air worth killing. And Hokomoko, not really building up vandals yet. Building more and more outlaws, but they are getting their production set up. And there's that blasting shot! First shot, not managing to do a whole lot of damage. Reload very shortly. There we go. Second shot coming in there. There we go. That stops the expansion attempt. But now the question is what's going to happen for Antier, because there's a razor right in the center of the map, taking out both Banshees. That sucks. So the Banshees are gone. The expansion going on for Dime Throne is nice, but still. Where can the Black Dawn go? Because Razor's just going to rip to shreds. Oh, it's going to go over and try to kill the Razor. I mean, it does have a bit more of a survivability around the Razor, so it could attack it. No, not that much more survivability. What, what are you doing? I guess it's going for a suicide mission against the Commander. Oh, that is painfully close. And holding the Commander in place. Not going to be able to get it, though. It's going to die before anything happens. On the way down, takes out the Commander. As it dies, as it crashes, that commander dies. Hokomoko, without any easy way of expanding up front and having taken a fair amount of damage, their economy getting behind Dimefriend, but Dimefriend is... Ah, they're accessing! Why are they accessing? That's not what they want to do. I mean, desperately trying to set up so they don't access, but yes, they are presently accessing. Getting another Black Dawn just to deal with all that excess metal, why not? I mean, the first one actually works really well, despite the anti-air. Now, at this point, there are seven Vandals, so there is enough anti-air to deal with this stuff. The Moderator will be nice. They'll be helpful. Deal with it to some extent. But yeah, that's... That's kind of done its job. It did a good job, though. I gotta say, that was actually pretty effective. I and mean, Hokomoko's commander's position meant that Hokomoko really wanted that commander to live. That death is going to be a blow. And the next step, of course, is just dealing with this... Con I mean... Keeping the expansions alive, keeping everything alive while, I mean, jump bot switch is completed. Hmm. Convict against moderator. Well, okay, obviously, sorry, bandit against moderator. Obviously bandit wins. So, oh, hey, cloaky bot is still being built too, because that apparently is not being a managed caretaker. Unless that was the idea, is to go for cloaky and jump bot. Which, given Dime Friend's economy, is not really sustainable. I don't know if that was they were planning, or they just aren't really paying attention to... Are they paying attention to that? Not not at present, no. No, they're, they're paying much more attention to the front lines. I don't know if they're paying any attention at all to that area in the back, because this here... That's doing a lot of work to the Clokybot factory, not a whole lot to help produce with the Jumpbot factory. But hey, you've got a Clokybot factory that's paid for now. It's just Hokomoko getting their economy back up. I mean, yeah, they lost the commander, that was a blow, but they've rebuilt. They're actually stronger. Their economy is considerably stronger. There's not a whole lot that they have set up that won't be stopped, and... I mean, what else is there? This is basically just Tokomoku probably going to rush forward. Blast on com uh, Black Dawn coming in here. Blast on! It's the Black Dawn suicide bombing. No, the Black Dawn coming in here. Dealing some damage, but not much. And the Vandals will be moving up. That'll take care of the Black Dawn. I mean, no, they're not moving up. That's just Bandits moving up. But the Bandits could probably take care of the Black Dawn, honestly. I mean, this is a bit intimidating for Hokomoko, and Hokomoko hasn't really done anything but more shields. I'm a bit surprised we aren't seeing any Racketeers yet. I mean, really, Black Dons are pretty good candidates for Racketeers, and as are Moderators, they both are. Now that Black Don managed to get a bit more harassment in there, next shot, there we go, getting rid of both Convicts, not getting rid of the Lotus, but the Convicts are the real key target. Everything else, kind of icing on the cake. And there goes that Lotus. Okay, why is that Black Dawn hanging around? It should probably continue to attack, get rid of this area here, or get rid of this. I mean, there's a lot of energy that needs to be get, gotten rid of. Not so much metal. And now the bandits coming in. Are they going to get attacked at all? Is that Blasphemy going to turn around and shoot them? Nope, no it's not. No, the Blasphemy is just going to die. That sucks for the Black... I mean, Black Dawn. Black Dawn's just going to die. Why did I say Blastwing? And Slight Revenge Missiles gets rid of two of the bandits. Not really worth it, but... I really like that mechanic. The fact that gunships can fire off a last shot as they fall to their deaths. As they're crashing. I always think that's kind of cool. I mean, it led to a commander kill earlier, so hey. That's the thing. 
But at this point, Dying Friend's moderators are really doing most of the work, and the Klukibot factory has been constructed, but it was probably not meant to be constructed in the first place, so I can see why it's not really being used much. Still, yeah, pure moderator against Bandit... Bandit Thug Outlaw. Which makes some sense. I mean, Thug Outlaw kind of makes sense given the fact that, you know, the shields would help. And that convict with the shielding. Oh man, just stopping the defender from- well, trying to stop the defender from dying. Failing to do so, but hey, bought enough time. However, at the same time, moderators to the southeast, there's not a whole lot stopping them. And this blast wing here, completely untouched. I mean, if those bandits find it, they'll probably all explode as they walk over it. At this point, though, the northwest is basically Hokomoko's. Dying Friends essentially lost it. And no, we are actually seeing some use here. No Valkyries being built, mind you, so Warrior is just being walked over, not being dropped. Oh well. I mean, that's still good. There's nothing wrong with that. Anyway, at this point, looks like... Yeah, there we go. Northwest has been taken. The South is also being taken, though. I mean, Hokumoko's taken some of the Northwest, taking some expansions. Dying Friend dealing damage just straight to the main base. Now, with the Pyro support, just in case... Now, just in case there's there's need for it, granted, it's not helping, actually. In fact, it's hurting quite a lot. The moderators are taking a lot of damage. Thanks to that outlaw slow, the pyro, not as slow, able to get out of the way and burn its compatriots. So all the moderators go down, in large part due to what should be their friend, the pyro. Because, yeah, pyros are immune to their own flames and to each other's flames. Other jump bot units are not immune to pyro flames. So that sucks for the moderators. That was re yeah, it was indeed painful. That was, that was harsh. I mean, at this point, I still say Time Friend has a bit of an advantage right now, but it's fading. They've got some good control. Like they're able to keep Hokomoko from dealing a lot of damage. They're able to keep Hokomoko from taking their half of the map, like taking Time Friend's half of the map at all, except for this set of bandits here. That actually does need to be dealt with. The problem is that not a whole lot's really pushing, and Dying Friend this entire game has been going for a very aggressive style. I mean, they had Gunches right at the start with a couple of Banshees that were harassing around, and then had the Blast Black Dawn to try to take out large swaths of territory. And now the moderators are being used aggressively, which is very unusual for moderators. So yeah, this has been a very aggressive playstyle, and at this point Dying Friend is being held back, which is the problem. I mean, yeah, Dying Friend is not losing, but their entire playstyle has been based on aggressively winning directly. Still taking back the Northwest, at least. Regardless, Time Friend, like, they just need to push something else. They can't... I mean, they're doing something with the moderators. The placeholder's really helping out with that. But the moderators are only doing so much. And they're going down pretty fast, too. I think with the Warriors, now the Warriors are done with the Northwest, they should be able to sweep around the western half of the map and probably take out the rest of Hokomoko's build up here. But Hokomoko, they are getting Banshees, they've gone for gunships, they had a decently strong economy for a while, but at this point it's still even. I mean, thanks to all the harassment over to the Northwest and South and such, it is fairly even. Now at this point though, Hokomoko going for a counterattack over to the eastern side of the map and one of the Warriors is about to go down, a lot of bandits going down with it though. Ooh, actually, taking out all the bandits. Wow! One health left! Is that going to stay out of combat for a little bit longer? And no. No, it does not. It was really close, too. If it stayed out of combat for like five seconds, it would have been fine. But it didn't. So that sucks. But at the same time, Western Half is being attacked. Done for managing to take that back. Is starting to excess a bit, though. Might want to build up some more than what they have right now. But yeah, that's the thing. Dying Friends basically... They're fine. Hokumoko, however, with a bit of reclaim to try to set themselves back up. And, I mean, these felons, how many felons are here? Yeah, there's two. Oh, one of them is under production. That, no? No? Ah, there it is. Okay, that makes sense. So yeah, a couple of felon thug convict balls. Felon thug outlaw balls, my mistake. Which is... Interesting. I mean, the moderators are kind of able to get rid of the shields pretty easily, so that's a bit risky. I mean, it can work, it's just not the composition I would necessarily go for. Racketeers, however, are being built, which is what I would go for. I would see the Racketeers, that's a good idea. 
So, Dime Friend able to take the Northwest again. Hokomoko with some reclaim to try to get themselves back into the game. And really nice use of the... Th I mean, that Felon is doing work. That is actually taking a lot of hits, and, I mean, it's dealt with a lot of stuff here. Firewalker, however, is up here. Hokomoko knows without a whole lot of defenses. Firewalker is still going to be useful. Actually, we'll get rid of the Felon right now. Ooh, not quite. A little bit far away. Doesn't manage to kill anything. So, I don't know. Time Friends actually not managing to push in either. Hokomoko's held them at bay. And with Hokomoko getting those Banshees up and Dime Friend without any anti air to deal with this, I mean, obviously, Tridents could be built in a hurry. Well, not that much. Actually, no, there's no Caretakers. Not that much of a hurry. So, really, it's going to come down to how long can Hokomoko hold this off. And if they can hold it off for a while, they can get a lot of Banshees. Like, especially if they get, like, a dozen Banshees or so and just run around the map with a dozen Banshees. That could easily win the game. That could just take it off Dime Friend directly. Because Dime Friend has no anti air. Dime Friend doesn't expect it. It's 50 minutes into the game and no air has been built for Hokomoko. What is Dime Friend going to think? I mean, Dime Friend's clearly expecting, given their lack of anti air defenses, that there's no air coming and there's no razors or anything. So it looks like Dime Friend should be able to get rid of this force in the front, but after that. Oh, nice Racketeer usage, pushing back the Warriors. I mean, Racketeer and Rogue together, that's just... That's gonna deal with Warriors, no problem. Rogue alone would deal with Warriors. But Racketeer on top of that? That's just cruel. Oh, I see. Apparently, Dying Friend had a bit of a crash issue. Well, apparently they rejoined, so that's that's okay. But yeah, Brawler coming out for Dying Friend. Banshees... Moving out, there we go. We have 12 Banshees indeed, or eight Banshees, my mistake. 12 Banshees between the two players, but yeah, eight Banshees coming in from Hokomoko. Nothing in place. Oh, never mind. There is the Warrior. Warrior in place to help defend against that. But otherwise, not much. Oof. Go to the main base, get rid of defenses. I mean, there's a Lotus being built up that needs to be killed first, and then the Wasp, and then everything else. Warrior trying desperately to get up there in time, but it won't be able to get there to save the Lotus. Won't be able to get there to save most of the economy, honestly. The rest of this, this is all dead. Dying Friend losing all their economy. Counterattack coming in with Rocco's from Dying Friend, and that's about it. No airbase counterattack. This brawler with a few seconds left before it's built up. It should be built up. Yeah, okay, there we go. No problems there. And that will help. That'll help get rid of the Banshees somewhat, but at this point, the Banshees have done so much damage. Dying Friend's lost half their economy, and... At this point, Rocco, pure Rocco versus Rogue Racketeer, I say that the pure Rocco is going to lose. Just the Racketeers alone, as a force multiplier, is really going to be the difference maker. And now, at least the Firewalker is going down. That is something. It did set a few of the Banshees on fire. So that's bad for the Banshees. And is that Brawler going to go down? No, the Brawler is getting attacked. I don't, I don't know if it's going to go down. I feel like it won't, but maybe? Well, it's being forced back, yeah. It's not good, but the the warriors should be able to pick up the slack. And by pick up the slack, I mean wipe out the entire set of Banshees if they're not careful, because already two of them have died within a couple seconds. Like, seriously, both Brawlers and Warriors are basically running the same weapons. They would get rid of Banshees easily. But Dime Friend going for a counterattack to the southeast, taking out Hokomoko's economy to the southeast. I don't know if Hokomoko's worried about that, though. I mean, the amount of damage that was dealt to main base, no factories killed. One worker killed. The caretaker has been killed, but at this point, Dying Frame doesn't care. They don't have the economy to power a caretaker-powered factory anyway, and they're powering all three of their factories. At this point, Hokomoko and Dying Frame both it pretty much one good push to win, but I think Hokomoko... Yeah, Hokomoko's got it. The Rockos are about to go down, and with that, Hokomoko's got a nice counterattack of rogues, and, Fel and Felon supported rogue, too. The Brawler being the one issue, but yeah, all the Rockos are now dead. These Banshees can go back, deal with the Brawler. Or not, because the Brawler's also dead. So this is basically it. Hokomoko going for the final blow. I mean, that was a really good surprise switch for the Banshees. That worked out remarkably well. Hokomoko just needs to push this, because there we go. That's it. That's game. Nicely done. So hey, I don't always cast games where Hokomoko loses. Sometimes, Hokomoko wins. Actually, that was a really good win, too. Bit of, wow, quite a lot of excess from Dime Friend. How much metal was produced? Ooh, wow. And they had the disadvantage on metal production the entire time, apparently. Just barely, though. 
But yeah, that's true. From the start of the game, Hokomoko did have a slight income advantage. It kind of went back and forth, but definitely for the first few minutes, yeah, it was entirely Hokomoko ahead. And Hokomoko was way ahead in energy economy. Sheesh. Never until like the 10 minute niche mark never dipped below Dynthroind. No, no, that 10, 15 minute mark. Sheesh. In terms of unit value though, pretty even. That's, that was made the game even. Mostly in that Dime Friend was super efficient with killing things. That's really what it came down to. Hokomoko built more and lost more. Like, built more? Lost more. So yeah. That was that. I hope you enjoyed that. I certainly did. It was a cool game. So thank you all for watching, and that's it for me tonight. So have a good night, everyone.